Hey there everyone, welcome to a little tutorial on how to use the dry bone shell in Mario Maker 2. Mario Maker 2 has added a ton of new things, but so far I've been having the most fun with this shell. Now this guide is going to go over the basics of how the shell works, answer a few questions that might not be obvious just looking at it, and then I'm also going to break out a few pieces of tech that I've found uh, over the past day or so while the game's been out. Um, just as a warning, I haven't been looking too much online, uh, like on Twitter or anything, so there may be some tech that is already kind of publicly known that I'm not going to be covering in this video, uh, but definitely if that's the case, uh, I would love to see it in the comments. So yeah, anything that's like missing, uh, throw a comment down there or send me a private message. I love to check out all the tech. That's kind of my favorite thing when a new game comes out. So with that out of the way, uh, let's get into it. The first thing you need to know is how to actually use the dry bone shell. You're going to place a dry bones, hold the dry bones until its alternate menu pops up, and then click on the shell variant. Now this does not work in the 3D world uh, version. Uh, you can't use it in 3D world. Once you've placed a dry bone shell anywhere in a level, you have a few different ways to interact with it. The first one is by jumping into it and using it like a boot. There's a lot of similarities between the shell and a boot, um, some of them being that it hops around, it does like little short hops while you're moving. It has immunity to spikes and to saw blades, it bounces off of them like a Yoshi or again a boot would. You can jump out of it uh, to gain a little bit more height, and when you take damage it's destroyed. It doesn't drop like a Yoshi does uh, and continue to exist, it is just completely gone. When you're not riding around in the dry bone shell, you can use it like you would a Koopa shell. You can kick it, or fire it from a cannon, but you'll notice it's a little bit different because it breaks upon contact. It has to be in this fast moving, kicked state in order to break on contact. If you drop the shell lightly, it won't break, which means you can use it to destroy an enemy, again without breaking it. If you jump out of it, it will softly land on the ground and you can get back in. If you're in the Mario World style, you can throw it upwards and it won't break when it hits a ceiling. Mario Maker 2 got some cool updates with the rising and lowering water and lava levels, and the dry bone shell is a great way to make use of that. The dry bone shell can go into lava and swim around along the surface. It does the same thing when you're in water, except you can also dive downwards by pressing down. When you kick the shell, it will rise up to the surface which you can use to send it across lava to hit blocks. And then, the main feature that you probably know about for the dry bone shell is that when you press down, you can turn into an invincible, unmoving dry bones that quickly revives. Additionally, if you press down while you're in the air, you can do a ground pound. As you may expect of a ground pound, you can also press up to cancel it early. You'll notice that the length of the dry bones animation varies. You have a little bit of control over it when you start it on the ground. As you can see in these examples, there's one where I'm holding down the entire time, there's one where I hold down for about half that time, and I end up being revived right outside of the large thwomp. And then there's this one where I just tap down and instantly release it. When I do this, I end up taking damage because I don't last as long in the invincible state. When you do a ground pound, you always get the maximum amount of time. I have not found a way by pressing any button to cancel this animation early if it starts from a ground pound. Being in the dry bone state allows us to pass through a lot of objects, just like we saw with the thwomps. There are solid objects we can't pass through, like walls and cannons for example. One thing we can pass through that is a bit annoying is the flagpole. I'm through the f With all that out of the way, we can move on to a few new pieces of tech that I've found over the past couple days. Again, I'll reiterate, there's probably more that's already out there, but this is stuff I've just found through experimentation that I wanted to share with you all. The first one is moving you while you're in the dry bone state. You could do it on something like a conveyor, as I do in this level to pass through a boo. And you can also do it on donut platforms in order to get through these saw blades. In this clip from Carl Sagan's stream the other day, where he was playing a speedrun level, uh, you can find the ID and the creator's name for that in the description below. You can see him ground pound onto a shell, and then have the shell itself move him, and then there are some instances where he is having trouble hitting the flagpole. Oh, That's a combination of a few of the mechanics we've already covered. Now earlier I mentioned I was having trouble finding a button that would cancel the animation for the dry bones, but there is definitely a way to do it, and that's edge cancelling. 
Edge cancelling automatically puts you back into your state as Mario riding the dry bone shell. It can be really annoying as a player to have to continuously use the dry bones animation since it is slow and you have no control over Mario during that time. Adding in a few well placed edge cancels can greatly improve the flow of your level design. Now there's one other piece of tech that I think is really interesting, but before I get to that, I just wanted to cover a few things that make this shell different from other shells in the game so far. One is that you can jump out of it, and then kick it. You can't unequip shell mitts to do the same thing, so this makes this a very different item in that sense. Another thing that makes them a bit different is that you can knock them away in their kicked state as soon as they fall out of a pipe, just by letting them bounce off your head. As you can see in this example, I placed a vine with a few arrows so you know how to position Mario in order to kick them into the blocks on the right. Now I wanted to get into my favorite tech that I've found so far, which I'm just calling ceiling shots. Normally when you're jumping out of the shell, it will just fall to the ground. However, if you're positioned against a ceiling when you press Z, it will kick the shell forward automatically. By default, this will kick it to the right but if you have a little bit of momentum in either direction, it will kick it behind you. If you have too much momentum though, you will just completely miss the shell, so this is pretty situational. And that wraps up all the unique uses of the dry bone shell that I have for you right now. That being said, I do want to showcase just one technique that's shared with the boot and the dry bone shell that is new to Mario Maker 2. In the airship night theme, items fall slower, so you can repeatedly jump out of the dry bone shell and land back in it in order to slow your descent. Again, this is shared with the boot as you would expect, but it is still a pretty interesting feature. Well, that's everything I have for you right now. If you want to play either of the two levels I made that showcase some of this tech, you can find the IDs below in the description. I hope you learned something new and that you enjoyed the video. If you have feedback or want to mention something that I may have missed, definitely let me know in the comments below. Also, if there's anything new in Mario Maker 2 that you think I should cover next, I'd also love to hear about that below. Hopefully, this video has given you some inspiration for how you can use the dry bone shell in your levels. Thanks for watching.